Joshua 5, verses 10 through 12. When you get it, say, still save. Amen. All right. Let me read this in uh, the, uh, the versions are very similar. So I'm going to read it from the NIV. It'll be very simple with the KJV. Verse 10 said, On the evening of the 14th day of the month, while camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, the Israelites celebrated the Passover. The day after the Passover, that very day, they ate some of the produce of the land, unleavened bread and roasted grain. And hear this. The manna stopped the day after they ate this food from the land. There was no longer any manna for the Israelites. But that year, they ate the produce of Canaan. Amen. Lord, have a blessing to the reading and to the hearing of this most holy word. Our sermonic theme today is when circumstances change. When circumstances change. Let me share a story with you. After three plus years, you know I love stories. Amen? I was watching TV in Chicago and I was watching the news. It indicated that a house had caught on fire and the owner of the house died in the fire. The owner of the house was an elderly woman who had lived there for several years. The only person living in the house was her son who had been living there with her. When interviewing the son, he had tears in his eyes, and the interviewer was able to find out that the son had no job and had no means of supporting himself. He had been living off of his mother. Now that the house had burned, and now that his mother had died, he had tears down on his eyes saying, I don't know what I'm going to do. There are those of us here who can relate to family members who can't seem to leave home, who seem to stay at home, and have not gained the ability to be able to support themselves. Maybe it may be because of fear. Maybe it may be because of circumstance. But at some point, my brother who was on the news had to come to grips with the fact that his circumstances had changed. Amen. And now he must respond to the circumstances. Amen. Our lives, church, are the epitome of changing circumstances Amen. and challenges. We grow up with the naive view of what life is going to be. But when life begins to happen, we see it's not all what's in a book. There are things in which we endure, in which we, in which we go through, that alter and change the course of how we live our lives. Oh, and these days, the long-term employee can face a layoff or even a termination. I've always said that an economy is in trouble when you land off teachers. <laughs> even though they have years of commitment, even in the city of Detroit, which is not far from Chicago where I grew up, 
who at once used to be the epicenter of industry and culture, and yet now sits in the midst of challenging circumstances that a city government had to seek reprieve in a bankruptcy court. It's in our own lives, church. Loves that was supposed to last forever now face the challenges of togetherness plagued by sick sickness or plagued by our own mortality. Our children, who we've had strong expectations for them, become victims of the streets and addiction. Or become uh, incarcerated in jail. The beauty of the baby has given away to the ugliness of circumstance and challenges. These are the things that hit us. And circumstances occur whether we want them to occur or not. But the question is, can a saint respond in faith to circumstance? Or will we let the circumstance overtake our faith? Come on, when plagued with no money or sickness or even the death of the loved one. Will we trust God to overcome the circumstance? Yes. Will God still emerge as the answer? Yes, he does. This scripture, my brothers and sisters, here it is now, the Israelites have spent several years in a wilderness. But it is significant because they had several challenges just by being in the wilderness. Right, right, right. Has God forsaken us? Several persons on the journey have passed away and were not able to make the journey. Even the primary leader who led them out of Egypt and proclaimed to, 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 to Pharaoh, let my people go. Even he had been buried in an unmanned, unnamed grave in disgrace for his sins. Here it is, church, that of all the challenges that, that, that they had, food was not a challenge. Because there was manna that came from heaven. It is, church, manna came from heaven. That even in the midst of circumstances, God still fed them. Now what does this mean, that church, that even though we go through the circumstance, God will still bless you. I lose my job, but there's somehow still food on the table. I've got sickness in my body, but I can still get up in the morning. I'm grieving in my heart because my loved one have died, but still I've got the will to persevere and survive. I was abandoned, but still I've got Jesus. The wilderness and, and the things and the challenges in which we go to does not mean that God is not there. The mere fact that they didn't have to focus on this, that they didn't have to be a part of this, this that they could still rely on the manner from him. God didn't depart from them and through the history of the Bible, God will not depart from us. They wanted a king, they got David. They needed the wisdom, they got Solomon. They needed encouragement. They got Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel. We needed a Savior, and we got Jesus Christ. We needed an apostle, a zealot, and we got Peter and Paul. God, God manages the circumstances. But please understand that just because you proclaim the name of Jesus does not mean you're not going to go through That's something. That's right. Hallelujah. We become naive in the belief that because we proclaim and give our life to Christ, that all of a sudden it's going to be smooth sailing. Right. Right. Oh, we come up here and everybody claps for us as we walk down the aisle to give our lives to Christ. We pray the prayer of salvation and we raise our hand and we shout that we're saved only to still deal with the same devils we work with. Oh, come on and help me, Holy Ghost. Yeah, hallelujah. It's not a cake hall. That's why many people can't make the journey. They personalize the circumstance and the challenges 
and they think it's only about them. God is only putting us into a situation because it says, church, that the testing of faith yes, Lord. produces endurance. Look at this scripture. Go to verse 12, church. Still say, it said, the manna stopped the day after they ate this food from the land. Yes. But there was no longer any manna for the Israelites. But that year they ate the produce of Canaan. Yes. Now hear this, church. There is a generation of people who were used to not having to work for food. Go to my brother who, who, whose mother burned up in the house. He didn't have to do nothing. She did it all. It's a generation that, 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 that have not had to focus on working for food. They could rely on this one thing. And now the supply is being cut off. Imagine that, that this is what I'm used to, but now the circumstances have changed. This is what I've got accustomed to. But now you got to go here and find your own food. The bread from heaven was gone. Now they have to adjust. Church, just like in our own lives, we got to adjust. Oh, when death or sickness hit, what will we do? We see in the story of our brother Job, he had to adjust to the circumstances. Everything that he had was taken away with sickness on his body. He had to adjust to the circumstances. This here now is a group now. They cannot rely on what's coming from above, but now have to now go, go, look, go pick fruit off the tree. They now got to focus on things like the harvest. All across this land, church, churches are facing new issues that they didn't have to prior. The gentrification of our community has brought in persons who don't have the roots or, or the respect for the community, nor do they have the understanding and the connection that we have with churches. We were used to be able to know people by what church they went to. Now when they, now they don't even go. We're plagued by a group of people who feel that a nature walk is enough with Jesus and that's all they need. Come on and talk to me, somebody. I can't praise a nature walk. But I can praise the cross. And I can praise for the blood that was shed from me. But the demographics are not in our favor. Now we have to work harder to get there because the manna that we used to have, we don't have anymore. Come on, somebody, the, the once bountiful budget of, of which any ministry could do whatever they want to be able to do. Now have had to be looked at and had to replace with stricter spending and budgetary standards. We got to adjust to the circumstances. Our once strong and mighty cathedrals and churches all across the land are now having to become a challenge with repairs and zoning issues. Circumstances have changed. Yes, yes, our, our theology that was once so much supported by the law and where all the saints were up in, you know, you know, were up in the court system and were all up in, you know, up in the Congress and all of that have now become, become replaced with persons who don't know God for themselves. The accountability of our society has now changed. Now it is our opportunity now, having now to be able to look at this a different way. A resource has been cut off that we were used to. Families that had six, seven kids and could have grandkids and could fill a church with just one family. Now even within this church, the most a family would have would be two to three kids. It's changed. It's changed. Now the work has to be hard to be able to handle the change. We didn't ask for it, but we're equipped to handle it. Yes, we are. Because we're saints of the most high God. When God took away the manor church, he 
left them with fertile land for crops and food. In the midst of the circumstances, they adjusted. Why did they adjust? Because they had to eat. You'll find a way to pick some fruit if you got to eat. You'll find a way to get a job if you need the money. It'll happen because you put it to a circumstance where it has to happen or else you die. You will always have to face the change of circumstances. And we can't blame others when we miss the opportunity for growth. Let us not take our challenges and circumstances of the day and allow them to, to, to divide us and break us apart. Let us do like the Israelites did and came together and pulled the fruit from the tree and ate the produce of the land. Yeah. Oh, it may not have been like God providing it from the heaven, but God still found a way to bless them because I'm going to give you a fertile soil by which you can grow it. Yeah. Oh, we see it throughout the biblical history. He invented Adam and Eve from the garden. But he still gave him a place to stay. Come on, somebody. He did. Moses was a stutterer. But he gave him somebody to speak for him. Joseph was jammed. Time and time again. But he raised them up to even save the people that put him in jail in the first place. The Bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. It means that we got covering in Christ no matter what the circumstances. Sure, we have to change up. Sure, we may have to do different things. Sure, we may have to pass out cards. Sure, we may have to do those things. But you don't do it for you. You do it for the cross. Everything. Will last. Yeah, let me give you this now. I remember learning to ride a bike. And, 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 and in the 70s, we had what's called a banana seat back bike. I don't know what was there in the 60s or whatever. I can't go back further than that, anyway. But it was, a, it was a long seat bike. But I tell you what, they're a lot heavier than these bikes today. Amen? And had these big handlebars in your. You had to ride, your hands would be up, and you had to have your weight attack to hold that bike up. My uncle taught me how to ride a bike. And there was a handle that was behind the bike. And so, and, and, and so when I would ride the bike, he had his hand in the handle, and his hand was strong enough to hold the bike up. So if it started going to the side, he could pull it back up. Right, if it started going to one side, he could pull it back up. He just wanted me to focus on pedaling. He wanted me to focus on pedaling the bike and putting my weight in the right place. Yeah. Well, well, one time I was riding and he, and he let go and I was riding. And I said, Uncle, I'm riding. And I got down to the end of the block and then I realized, oh my God, I'm riding. <laughs> and the bike fell over. <laughs> I said, Uncle, uh, look, I fell over. He said, get back up. Right. Get back on. I'm not coming back down here. I'm not coming there to get you. Get up and start riding. I said, come on, Uncle, I can't do it without you. He said, you don't have to do it without me. I got up on, I got up and I tried to balance. I tried to balance my weight and then tried to move the pedal. See, something had been taken away from me. The force that was holding me up had been taken away from me. So now I had to account. I knew how to balance, I know I knew how to pedal, but I hadn't mastered how to balance. So I would start a little bit and fall over. I would start a little bit and fall over. And finally, I would get going. And, I, and then I would get going. I got going down the other block, and I kept going. I had balanced it right. Did I fall? Did I scrape myself? Oh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. But I kept going, and pretty soon I didn't fall. Look, when a circumstance comes, you've got to regain your balance. Right, look, look, when a stroke victim is hit, they got to you know when they're going back to learn, they got to learn how to walk, they got to regain the balance. Because the equilibrium is off. They're used to a certain way, doing a certain thing. They're used to a force there that they had for so long, but now it's taken away, so now you got to adjust. You got the balance. We 
death hits close to home, you got to balance. It's going to knock you over, but you got to get back up. You got to balance. When the, job, when the job loss is tough and it's going away, you got to balance. When money is low in the account, you can't do what you used to do, you got to balance. Regain. Oh, help me. Hold it. Hold We come today to celebrate communion. Christ is saying, just as when the scripture of the manna from heaven going away, Christ is saying, I'm about to leave right now. What you're used to in the physical of me touching you and talking directly to you in human form, that's going away. But I'm going to give you something that's going to help you balance. When you take this bread, when you drink this blood, you will do it in remembrance of me. So whenever situation come against you, you stand up and you regain your balance. Come on, let's give God praise for the Holy Word. 